A beautiful but bitter cold sky hangs over Maplewood, Minnesota. Maplewood is just a nice, safe, developing community. There was always something going on for nightlife and always something to do. But a disadvantage with Maplewood is that the winters can be colder than the Arctic. So subsequently, if something happens outside, nobody witnesses it. On the night of Friday, November 7th, 1986, best friends Morna and Shannon brave the cold to hit up a local hotspot. Empty Pockets was a popular bar in Maplewood. The locals like to hang out there to enjoy a relaxing night with friends. It was very busy that night. We were already at max capacity by 8 o'clock. There was a lot of young women, and subsequently that brought out a lot of young men. The music was nice and loud. Everybody was out on the dance floor. I had six bouncers, eight bartenders going, and 10 waitresses. You couldn't find a seat sitting at the bar. On this particular Friday night, most of the people out in the bar knew each other. It was bar people perceived as safe. That night, Warren and Shannon, they were sitting at Kelly's station at the bar. Kelly was a popular bartender. She was a really nice personality. Morna and Shannon enjoyed her company. Because they were regulars, we'd have frequent conversations with them. Morna, to me, seemed a little more reserved and quiet. Shannon was more outgoing, talked to other people in the establishment. There were a lot of locals who'd go to the bar. There was a man named Terry, who was a local barber. He used to throw parties after the bar closed at his barber shop. I've been over to Terry's probably eight, ten times. Everybody knew where it was, because it was close to the bar. It was only a few blocks. There was another man who was referred to as Karate Guy. The Karate Guy thought he was a black belt in karate, and he liked to make his moves on the dance floor. He seemed a little eccentric, a little out of the ordinary. He would go about the bar hitting on women, pestering them, buying them drinks, expecting them to give him special attention. There was a man who was blonde, about 28 years of age, was pestering Morna and Shannon to dance. The girls weren't interested in dancing with him. I didn't. Uh have enough conversation with this person to even know his name. He had a tan leather jacket on. I thought he looked like a young Bruce Springsteen. The beers are cold and the music infectious. Morna and Shannon eventually feel the pull of the dance floor. The DJ on Friday nights was very popular. The dance floor was the right size. They had a few beers. Uh, did some dancing, and then around uh, 12.30 in the morning, decided to leave. As they're walking to the parking lot, someone calls Shannon back into the bar for a conversation. It was 17 degrees with a 10 degree wind chill, and Morna's not wearing a jacket, so she continues to walk to the car. 15 minutes later, Shannon comes out of the bar and Morna is gone. Before Shannon left, she went back to the bar and looked for Morna. The bartender helped her out, went through the bar, but couldn't find Morna anywhere. Shannon gets in her vehicle, drives around the parking lot looking for Morna. After 45 minutes, she finally gives up, believing Morna found a ride home with someone else.